I have been trying to come up with better introduction than just go hi or Sasha my name is or whatever. Anyway, I hope you're okay. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed the first release of our coffees. I had a lot of fun actually making these coffees, tasting them and um, sharing them with you. Again, if you do want to discuss anything about the coffees you tasted, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you, whether you like them or not. It doesn't really matter. It would be great to get your feedback as well. Now, I'm very excited for this release as well. <laughs> uh, it's actually uh, coming from the country that I visited for the very first time in my life, uh, which was last year. So this coffee is from Ecuador. And last year I was invited to go to Ecuador to judge uh, one of the local competitions. And I was also lucky enough to be able to talk to so many farmers and share some of the experiences that I have or we have in Project Origin team with carbonic maceration and improving the processing, etc. And uh, I remember when I've tasted the coffees on a cupping table for the first time in Ecuador, no matter what varietal I tasted, and also no matter what profile or uh, sorry region it comes from, there was one thing in common with all of these coffees. Every time coffees were really creamy, very well structured, very well balanced. And I just kept thinking, God, how is this going to taste as an espresso? Of course, spending an extra time in Ecuador, going to different regions, I started to understand what possibly what region is best potential for espresso as well as the best varietal. And yet I've learned that uh, region in La Papaya uh, is uh, for me one of the most amazing potential espressos I could taste. So coffee you're tasting today, it is from La Papaya. And the varietal, it's called Tipica Mejorada. It's a beautiful story and it's very nice stories which I want to share with you. So Tipica Mejorado in Spanish means Tipica New. And back in the 60s, Nestle, they purchased a really big farm as their research and development farm. And in this farm, they've actually brought so many different varietals from all over the world, including Ethiopia. And this particular varietal, uh, which is called Tipica Mejorado, has been taken from one of the managers that used to work with Nestle and he's taken the seeds and planted them on their farm where he also had Tipicas but because these Tipicas look a little bit different uh, he called it Tipica Mejorado so they can separate the old Tipicas against these new Tipicas now why I'm sharing this coffee is, is because it's got this all of these beautiful notes that we normally would have in Ethiopian coffees a lot of florals, a lot of sweetness uh, white tea notes, jasmine notes but as I mentioned earlier, with this terra from Ecuador, especially this small micro region of La Papaya, coffees are extremely sweet. Now, sweetness is something that I love in espresso. So this matrix is going to be really interesting because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be chasing that sweetness to find that perfect recipe. But in the same time, we're going to try to unlock these beautiful white florals, orange, mandarin notes in the coffee. It's going to be very simple, very delicious, very elegant, and most of all, very beautiful espresso experience. So let's start doing the matrix. We will be starting with three different doses. 19.5 in, 20, and 20.5 grams. Now, why we're we doing it is because we're chasing the texture. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of coffees in Ecuador, they have this beautiful creamy texture, and this is my objective. Now, I normally found that by when I change the dose up or down, I can actually really adjust the tactile balance in the best possible way. Again, we're gonna ignore the flavor for the moment. We're not gonna be really looking for these beautiful florals that I mentioned or orange notes. We just wanna make sure that we have this creamy texture, beautiful aftertaste, uh, not too much texture because that's going to mask the flavors but also not too little because that way we're not going to be able expressing the terra or the country. So we're going to try to find this right amount of tactile balance and the texture so we can actually make sure that coffee is expressed itself in the best possible balance and then we're going to start looking for these flavors that we normally find in Tipica Mejorado. So that's going to be a second step. So let's start chasing the texture together. 39 out, 24 seconds with the first coffee. Second coffee, 20 in, 40 out, 26 seconds. And the final coffee, 20.5 20 in, 
41 out, 28 to 29 seconds. Now, what I'm looking for at the moment is just to see the amount of weight we have in a cup. So I'm trying to ignore the excitement in the flavor. For example, 19.5, it's really exciting. It's got these beautiful florals, a lot of um, sparkling acidity, but for me, the tactile in this coffee is really thin, really watery, and finishes pretty flat. So I'm already gonna take this one out of the consideration because coffee is a little bit too short. It's more like a filter experience as opposed to espresso experience. Now 20 grams is, is getting better. We're getting a little bit more weight in a cup, but definitely not as good as it is 20.5. 20.5, we have a lot of sweetness uh, more at the moment. Flavors are a little bit closed. Um, we're getting a sweetness of caramel, dark chocolate in the tactile, as well as a quite bit of dark honey. I really love this as a foundation. I also want to challenge it. I also want to take this further and try 21 uh, extraction or possibly 21.5 and just to see whether we can continuously improving that creaminess or this is the best one. So we're going to repeat this matrix again without necessarily changing the dose or the time but we're just going to add more uh, grams in a coffee and to see pretty much whether we're going to be locking in 20.5 or 21 or even 21.5. So let's make three more shots and we'll come back. So we're just going to recap the first three shots. 19.5 grams in, for me it was a little bit thin, a bit watery, even though flavor was exceptional. Uh, at 20 grams in, we started seeing uh, more of the balance. I was excited to taste 20.5 in. I feel with 20.5 in, we managed to get really good balance, really good creaminess, a lot of texture, a lot of multi-layered dimensions in the tactile balance, as well as a super long, sweet finish. So I thought maybe if we continue extending uh, this uh, dose at 20.5, 21, even 21.5, uh, we actually see what the optimum is. Now, with 21 grams in, uh, coffee started being unbalanced. It started becoming a little bit too heavy, too chocolatey, too dark, and flavors were completely closed. And at 21.5 in, we actually clearly got under-extracted coffee. So, fruit acids have not been developed well enough. It was tasting more very sharp, very lemon-like. On the opposite side was really heavy but in the same time dull and uh, even some of the slight woody characters coming through obviously this woodiness is not coming from the knowledge that coffee is old and past crop but sometimes when we under extract coffee a lot i get this sort of woody almost like cedar like sensation uh, really dry sort of really sour on the aftertaste so we're going back to this 20.5 dose and we're gonna lock it in. Now, I do feel that this dose is a great foundation for us, uh, but now it's our job to make sure that we start opening up these flavors, these white florals and orange notes that I mentioned earlier, which we're gonna do next. All right, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, we know what we wanna do, we wanna find more flavor. We wanna find more florals, white flowers, and mandarin orange notes. Now, the recipes we've run is 20.5 in, 41 out in 29 seconds. And we have, in my opinion, two different directions to see where, where do we wanna go. Um, so, definitely wanna open up the extraction. So we definitely wanna sort of see possibly some of the lighter compounds coming through and not to concentrate the flavor as much as we have. So the way we're gonna do it is we are going to speed up the shot. So next shot we will do, it's going to be a couple seconds faster than this one. Same ratio, same in and same out, and hopefully we can get some of the lighter compounds uh, coming through in the, in the shot. But we, in the same time, we're going to do a little bit different extraction. We'll taste both of these coffees and we'll see one or the other, which one gives us more of the floral characters, and then we're gonna continue going that path. interesting round so we've just run uh, two different recipes uh, this one here we ran 43 grams out at 31 seconds and this coffee is here we ran it 41 grams out 27 seconds 
For me, it's pretty obvious that the coffee will be run a little bit longer. Uh, 43 grams out at 31 seconds, we managed to get quite a bit of sharp acidity, a bit more lemon juice, uh, flavors were underdeveloped. Even though we had this big body and a lot of caramels, the flavors were not interacting very well with the espresso. So definitely not a good direction, not a good way to go. I'm liking what I'm tasting here because coffee is fairly, it's, it's a very balanced. Um, fruit is slowly opening up, but we definitely need to open up this fruit a little bit more. Mm. So 20.5 in, 41 out, 27 seconds. Um, acidity is a little bit sharp and uh, we need to open up the extraction a little bit more. And in order to do that, we again going to drop the dose. We're dropping the dose to 20.2 in, 41.5 out and 27 seconds. Now with this recipe, we definitely opened up this acidity. Instead of being a sharp, almost lemon-like, orange-like, now it's more like blood orange, super sweet, super jammy, super round. It's beautiful. However, we've opened up another problem, uh, which is set of problems, which is the texture. By dropping the dose down, we definitely made a taste balance rounder, but we've also decreased the tactile, the weight, and the finish is a little bit tannic. We definitely have these beautiful white florals there, but these white florals are dominating with the tannins. It's something that I like to avoid, especially in the aftertaste. For me, with the round espressos, with these you know, beautiful Ecuador coffees that I mentioned earlier, we want creaminess to be celebrated and we want these florals to be integrated with that creaminess rather than uh, florals to be dominated with the tannins. Now, in order to fix that, I think it's gonna be fairly easy. We we're gonna lock in the dose, 20.2 in. We are also going to lock in 27 second extraction, but we're gonna decrease the yield. Instead of 41.5 out, we will be extracting 40 grams out. And I think this is going to be delicious. Let's make it. Wow. Are we ready? I think we found it. <laughs> To me, I actually have a goosebumps tasting this coffee just now. It's just beautiful. So um, let me start with, you know, my expression of what I'm tasting. Uh, when we look at the taste balance, a lot of caramels, but then just a lot of harmonica honey, really nice and dark honey. But that acidity is so well integrated with that sweetness that you really need to look for it to find it. When we find the acidity in a cup, it's marmalade, orange, you know, this super sweet mandarin, a lot of ripe citrus fruits. Um, I actually quite enjoy the bitterness. For me, bitterness is ruby grapefruit, very subtle, medium to low intensity of bitterness, but just high enough to complement the complexity of the taste balance. Very well integrated, you know, medium to high sweetness, medium to low acidity of really high quality citrus and also low amount of bitterness of ruby grapefruit. Tactile, you know, it really reminds me of when I've tasted this coffee for the very first time in Ecuador. It's just perfect tactile for espresso. Texture, creamy, round, chocolate, chocolate mousse. Like it's, even though it's really thick, in the texture, it's also light and fluffy. A lot of honey still, it's very multi-layered. You know, we're talking chocolate mousse, we're talking dark honey, really creamy. And the, I must say the aftertaste for me is most favorite part. Uh, this is where Tipica Mejorado is really shining through. Cause that beautiful brown sugar, a lot of sweetness, a lot of length, that's so well integrated with the white florals, hint of jasmine, just sits very nicely. We have definitely reduced these tannins because now in the aftertaste, we're just getting a sweetness and we're getting the flavor of the florals. Flavor, it's just beautiful and simple. For me, when I taste espressos, sometimes I wish just to have a couple flavors that are very distinct and simple and integrated. And that's what I'm tasting here with this espresso. Uh, mandarin and uh, white florals quite a bit of caramel that's supporting it and uh, very flawless. Definitely one of these coffees that flavor is very common that we find in a coffee and it's nothing exceptional or wow. But what's exceptional about this cup is that 
everything works very well together. And the, this espresso tells a beautiful story. It tells the story of the producer, uh, tells the story of the varietal and the country. So, enjoy it. One more thing, with this espresso, I would love you, before you have a very first sip, please wait for two, two and a half minutes. Maybe put your timer just like we did now, and after two, two and a half minutes, have a taste. Enjoy it with two, three, four, five sips because it definitely will get better as it sits in the cooler temperatures. Enjoy it.